Senator Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to thank the witnesses. Uh, I want to concentrate on just acknowledging the rally situation here. Uh, I made little notes here. One of the little scribblings I put here was too little too late. You know, we, we threatened serious consequences with Crimea. Crimea. They've done it. We instituted sanctions. As Senator Corker uh, basically talked about, uh, the currency strengthened. The stock market rose slightly. Um, I've heard the President repeat words that I, I know a lot of us have also repeated as well. We, we need to change Putin's calculus. I'm not hearing anything discussed here today that's going to change Putin's calculus. When we were in Ukraine, uh, I, I was asking the Prime Minister, you know, what, what, what can we do to do that? And very clear, he was very clear in saying, well, Vladimir Putin will not respond to words. He'll only respond to action. So, Secretary Newland, let, let me just ask you first and foremost, why have we not, why do we continue to only talk about providing non-lethal military support? Well, I think first it's a it's a question better directed to Dr. Farkas, but let no, me this, give no, this the is actually diplom this is the, this is diplomatic. Yeah. You know, because early on, uh, before Crimea was annexed, we were told that well, we better not supply small arms and ammunition because that could provoke Vladimir Putin into taking over Crimea. Has the administration changed its calculus? in terms of the fact that Vladimir Putin doesn't need provocation. He'll create his own provocation. Are we recognizing that reality as we're seeing this thing, I, I, I don't know, spin out of control? Have you changed your calculus in terms of what you think may or may not change Vladimir Putin's calculus? Senator, I think you know from our private conversations, I'm not persuaded personally that he can be de deterred in the ambition that he has. But what we can do is make it cost for Russia for these actions that he's already taken. And as I said in my testimony, I think whether he realizes it or not, there have already been significant costs to the Russian economy. $51 billion in capital outflow in the first quarter alone a credit rating just above junk. As I said, I was in Europe last week and had a chance to talk to a number of European business folk who say that nobody in Europe is investing in Russia anymore, that their products are being, um, are too expensive let, let, let for Russians to buy. Just, let me just point out, uh, Secretary Glasser, when did those capital outflows start flowing? When, when did that capital start fleeing Russia? The the, the, the number that uh, Victoria gave, and I think the, closer, the number is actually closer to 63 billion, are year-to-date numbers. So this is first quarter of 2014 okay. alone. Okay. So since you've been sanctioned. My, my, my point being is the stock market, they had their Black Monday on March 3rd, two weeks before we in, in, instituted sanctions. The currency had already devalued before we ever instituted sanctions. My, my guess is the capital flew, you know, took flight out of Russia Certainly before we ever instituted sanctions, I'm not sure sanctions had any effect whatsoever other than, you know, the Russians have mocked them. So we're threatening greater sanctions, but, you know, Secretary Newland, you said they're diverse opinions. It's hurting cats. I'm not in any way, shape, or form convinced that the Europeans will ever agree to sanctions that would have any possibility of changing Vladimir Putin's calculus. So I'm asking what else could we do that actually would change his calculus, because sanctions won't do it because we'll never institute the types of sanctions that might. Senator, as I said, uh, we are hopeful that working with Europe, we will have a strong package. But obviously, if that work is not successful, we'll have to, we'll have to move forward. And, and that's be what too, we're Then it'll be too little too late, because this is spun out of control, and Vladimir Putin will accomplish what he wanted to in East Ukraine, Eastern Ukraine. And then what? Senator, I, mean, I, think, I think we're in this with this Russian leadership for the medium term, and we need to buckle our seatbelts for that, and this economic um, approach is going to take some time. The economic approach is going to fail. So that's what I'm saying. When the economic approach fails, then what do we do? Are we ever going to consider providing even small arms to the brave and courageous people of Ukraine? Who I, I know you share that opinion. You've been over there. You see the desperation in their voice. Are we ever going to consider doing more than just threats, talking tough? I think there is a question whether in the short run 
what we're talking about, the 19 days between now and the election, even with all the will in the world, uh, one could pour enough in there to tip the balance vis-a-vis -vis the mighty Russian military if he chooses to use it. So again, um, we need to make it clear what the costs are going to be and continue to escalate them going forward. We're not making it clear, though. We're not making it clear at all. We're, 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 again, we're threatening sectorial sanctions, whatever that means, with, with, a, with a, you know, bunch of allies that have diverse opinions and are a bunch of cats. Senator, with... What, what, with, what is clear about with, that at all? What, why would that change Vladimir Putin's calculus? With respect, whether he has registered this yet or not, the ruble is down 20% against the dollar as, since so, the new so year. What, what is, so they what is are that, in recession so what, Exactly. What does that tell you? He seems to be impervious to the economic harm. As I said, he's, I... He's not going to respond to that. What might you do that he might respond to? Uh, again, we are on an escalatory ladder here, and we need to continue to raise the pressure if he continues to, to um, pursue an aggressive path vis-a-vis -vis Ukraine. If I could just add one thing, Senator, it's, it's not as if the Ukrainian military doesn't have small arms and ammunition or that they don't have their own lethal equipment. And when they came to us with their list of desired equipment and other support, they prioritized it for us. And frankly, they did prioritize non-lethal, a lot of non-lethal assistance. Well, that, that's because when we were there, the Prime Minister specifically said he's not going to ask for something that he knows will be refused. So. If he, if he knows he's, it's going to be refused, he's not going to ask for it. If, if you're in that position, what type of lethal weaponry do you think Ukraine needs to change Putin's calculus? Anti-tank weapons? I mean, what, what, what might actually work? Senator, I think I'm not going to disagree with my colleague. Um, frankly, it's not the military balance that's going to change the calculus for President Putin. He will know that it will be bloody if he chooses to intervene militarily in Ukraine. Make no mistake, it will be bloody and it will be a disaster tactically and certainly strategically. So I think that adding more military, lethal military equipment into the equation, into the balance, isn't going to change things. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator Murphy. 